Good afternoon. Do you ever feel bored, like your life is in a rut? Your life is a big fat zero? Comedian Brad Stein puts it this way, I feel like I'm in a rut. Every time I go to bed at night, I find myself just getting up again the next morning. Okay. Well, some of us are grateful just to get up the next morning. But there are many people, if they were to define their lives at its essence, who would define their life with one word, boring. People will sometimes go to desperate measures to escape boredom. There once was a major league pitcher named Mo Drabowski. Mo was known among baseball players as the ultimate prankster. He used practical jokes to escape the boredom of long days in the bullpen. Now, Mo was a specialist at imitating voices. He was so good at it that he was known to call opposing bullpens in the voice that sounded just like the opposing manager and order pitchers on the opposing team to warm up. Yeah. He was also known for changing the numbers on hotel room doors, causing all kinds of problems, and ordering takeout food from Hong Kong in the names of opposing players. His meanest trick was putting snakes in shortstop Luis Apar... Apar why do I always get these names? Luis, Luis Ap Aparicio's pants, pockets, before the shortstop got to the uh, clubhouse. Now, Aparicio was deathly afraid of snakes, uh, set an all-time record for getting undressed. <laughs> One thing you could say about Mo, he may have gotten bored, but he was not a boring individual. Boredom has been known to get people in trouble. Some people have become entangled in sexual affairs because of boredom. Even acts of violence can sometimes be the result of too much time on the hands of people with real problems. However, boredom has also led to amazing acts of creativity. In 1581, a 17-year-old medical student at the University of Pisa became bored in church. I can't imagine that. Can you? Bored. Bored in church, of all things. The student is remembered by his first name, Galileo. One day during Mass at the Cathedral of Pisa, Galileo became bored and dreamily fixed his eyes overhead on a chandelier swinging from a long rope. It seemed to him that the time it took the chandelier to swing from one side to the other was the same whether the chandelier was a large or a small one. He used his own pulse beat as a medical student. He knew that under normal conditions our pulse beats regularly to test his intuition. Later on, he experimented with a metal ball suspended by a string, which is now known as a simple pendulum, and found that he was correct. Every swing of the ball, large or small, took the same time. In 1602, he used the principle of the pendulum to invent an instrument to measure the pulse rates of patients. This simple device proved of great value to physicians. Years later, in 1641, at the age of 77, when he was totally blind, the idea of making a clock regulated by a pendulum occurred to him. His son, Vincenzo, a clever mechanic, made several drawings and models. But it was left to a Dutch scientist to make the first working pendulum clock 15 years later in 1656. Now, nevertheless, because he got bored in church, Galileo's discovery of the principle of the pendulum paved the way for the accurate measurement of small intervals. Now, I mention all of this because in the 1970s, an economist named Tiber Skitkovsky wrote a book called The Joyless Economy. In this book, he tried to explain why so many people today are unhappy, even though they have plenty of money. His explanation was boredom. He concluded that these unhappy people who were bored had made some poor choices. They had chosen comfort instead of, instead of uh, stimulation. They had chosen pleasure instead of purpose. They had failed to find active interests that would engage them outside their work. And today I want to introduce you to a man who faced many obstacles in his life, but I guarantee you he was never bored. You don't get bored when you are cha changing the world. This man's name was Saul of Tarsus. He's better known to us as the Apostle Paul, a follower of Jesus Christ. You simply cannot give your life to Christ completely and unreservedly and ever, and ever be bored. It's impossible. There are always new challenges. 
Now, Paul came from a good Hebrew family. He was a member of the Pharisees, an elite group of strict religious teachers. Indeed, he was one of the most zealous of Pharisees, persecuting followers of Jesus and trying hard to destroy the early Christian church. Paul was born into the right family. He had all the right credentials. He was well respected, even admired. In his society, comfort, privilege, respect. What more could a man want? And then Paul had an encounter with Jesus Christ, an encounter that changed his life forever. He suddenly realized that his greatest goal in life as a Pharisee to protect and uphold the laws of Moses was not worth giving his life to. He came to see that the truth of God could only be found in the life of a humble man from Nazareth named Jesus. So he gave up all his comfort and privilege to study Jesus and to spread the message of Christ's life, death, and resurrection. And from that point on, Paul's life was one long adventure. He became the young church's most effective missionary. He traveled more than 10,000 miles across the Roman Empire, preaching and teaching about Jesus and setting up Christian churches everywhere he went. But it was not an easy journey. He was persecuted, arrested, imprisoned, shipwrecked, beaten for his faith, and finally martyred. In fact, these verses from Philippians that we've just heard were probably written while he was in prison. Paul is looking back at his life, at his goals and accomplishments, and he is asking himself the question we all ask at some point, was it all worth it? Did my life make a difference to anyone? Paul, of course, could have coasted to a comfortable, and, a comfortable end, but his commitment to Christ set him on a different course. Was it worth it? Listen to what Paul says. But whatever were gains, to me I know, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Then skipping down to verse 13, we read, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, one thing I do, forgetting is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Those are the words of a man who knew how to defeat boredom. He did it by giving his life to the greatest cause available to any man or woman, the cause of serving Christ. The late Adrian Rogers once told of seeing an ad for a drive-in passion play. Now, for those of you who don't know, a passion play is a play that is depicted, uh, a, play, a, play, a play depicting the arrest, torture, and crucifixion of Jesus. So it's, it's pretty dramatic and dark. But this passion play was like a, like a drive-in movie. You could watch the story of Jesus without ever getting out of your car. The ad read, Come and experience the life of Jesus all from the comfort of your own car. Adrian Rogers wrote, I pondered that, and I was overwhelmed with the truth that we will not experience the life of Christ or the life that Christ desires for us or be the church that God desires us to be from within our area of comfort. We must get out of the car. Paul didn't want to drive in experience of, of the Christian life. In his words, he wanted to gain Christ and be found in him. And he wanted to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings. Paul had no desire to simply be an observer from the comfort of his car. Carlo Corretto once put it this way, The world and the cross do not get along too well together, and comfort and holiness do not share the same room. Comfort and holiness do not share the same room. What a profound statement. We have to make a choice, don't we? One or the other. Which will it be? Conrad Murrell, in his, his book, Faith Cometh, tells of counseling a man who was struggling with following the teachings of Jesus. The man's wife threatened to leave him if he became serious about his faith. She thought it would get in the way of her lifestyle. Now that's interesting because, believe it or not, Studies show that for most Christians, their faith barely influences their lifestyle at all. 
But this woman was smart enough to realize that if they took their faith seriously, it would require some changes. At the same time, the man's business partner was pressuring him to engage in some unethical business practices. To top it all off, while on a business trip, a very attractive woman made sexual advances toward him, and he did not give in, but he was seriously tempted. He was torn between two worlds. He was torn between his commitment to Christ and the world of do whatever you've always done. Do what feels good. Do what gets results now. Was it worth it? Was it worth what it might cost him, he wondered, to give up his old life to follow Jesus? Now that's the central question of life, isn't it? Is there a God? Yes. If so, what does God want from me? And finally, what's worth living and dying for? Big questions. What would you have told the troubled man if you were Pastor Murel? We'll get back to that story in a few moments. Paul made his choice. He threw away his old life. He even referred to his former way of living as garbage. After making this choice, nothing mattered to Paul as, as much as gaining Christ and being found in him. Paul wasn't just saying that he gave up his old life. In his mind, when he, was, when he identified uh, when he identified with Christ, he died to his old life, and it wasn't an easy death. Crucifixion was the, was the most painful, tortured, and publicly shameful death you could imagine. In the same way, you and I are violently opposed to giving up our own will and our own agenda and laying them down at the foot of the cross and saying, not my will, but yours be done. That's why it requires living by faith and having the Holy Spirit work in us. Most of us would run in the opposite direction from the way Paul chose to live his life. But Paul was straining toward his calling, a calling that had caused him to lose all status and safety and comfort. He was pushing toward the life and calling and mission and love for Jesus with all his might because he finally found the one thing that really mattered. It was the one thing that he was made for. Everything else was garbage besides knowing Jesus Christ and being found in him. So what about us? What about us? Have we chosen our own comfort and our own agenda and our own goals as the purpose of our lives? Or have we chosen Christ living in us as the purpose of our lives? That is the limit that faced the man Pastor Murrell was counseling, a man toward between two worlds. Pastor Morell counseled the man that it was time to get some things settled in his life. He actually had four options to choose from. Pastor Morell counseled, but once he chose one, he had to abandon the other three options. The first option, according to Pastor Morell, was to walk out the door and not change a thing. For most of us, that would be the easiest option. He could go on back to his life of moral conflict and spiritual struggle and just tough it out. Could he live like that, Pastor Morell asked? No, the man replied. He was at a breaking point. Something in his life had to change. So Pastor Morell proposed option number two. He could simply give up serving God at all. He'd go back to, to living the way he wanted to live, like, like he did before he, he gave his life to Christ. He could forget all about serving God. He could settle for a life of doing what felt good. He could take as his moral guide what everyone else is doing. He could go back to his old life before he knew Jesus. Could he live with that option? No, the man said. He said he had met Christ. It was too, too late for him to go back to what he, had, uh, what he had been. Then the third option, said Morell, is to commit suicide. Not really, of course. The pastor was applying a little shock therapy. He wanted the man to understand what a serious crossroads he was at. The final option, Pastor Murrell said, was to follow the Lord no matter what it cost him. This option was to obey God's commands even if his wife left him, even if his business partner stole from him. He could give up everything he used to trust in, used to measure his success by, everything that, that used to give him pleasure or status. Give it all up for the sake of knowing and serving God. As the pastor said, live, die, sink, or swim. You must follow Jesus. The man chose the final option. 
He left Pastor Muriel's office that day with only one goal in life, to live for God in all circumstances. As he said, he's my only hope of life. There's nothing else I can do. Can you imagine such a commitment? A few years later, Pastor Murrell met, uh, met this man again. Life had not been easy for him. He had been through much pain, but he reported that it was worth it. His relationship with his wife was better than ever. She was now a follower of Christ too. The pain they had experienced had brought them closer together. Even more important, they had discovered a mutual joy that served as a witness to everyone who knew them. They had found the one worthwhile goal in life and they had no regrets about the direction their life had gone. My friends, this is all out Christian living. It's about leaving everything behind that hinders you from following Christ. It's not always the most comfortable way to live. But I can guarantee you, you will never be bored and think your life is without value. It is the only way to experience life abundant. So, are you bored with your life? Are you longing for something more? Even worse, are you torn with conflict between the demands of the world and demands of God? Look to Christ. Give him your all without reservation. Discover the joy that comes with following Jesus all the way. Amen, indeed. It's easy to say the words. But is it easy to walk that walk? That's the question. Can you walk that walk? He can walk that walk. <laughs> right. yeah. Lord, have mercy. Amen. I'm waiting for that floor to come crashing down. All right. Oh, a hug. Thank you. Thank you. It's a tough one. You should never, ever be bored in life. Ever, 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 ever. Ever. Shouldn't be a word in our English language. Weekly announcements. We've got a load of them this week. I try to cut, cut, cut them back because we're getting a little long on the announcements. So we're trying not to do all the announcements every week, but we still have some important ones we've got to do like this one. <laughs> request for prayer. If you have a request, a prayer request that you'd like for us to help you with, pray at DallasULC.com. Pray at DallasULC.com. Just send us an email. Uh, you can remain anonymous. You can use your name. You can ask that your prayers be said during the regular prayers, which we pray every day here at Salus Universal Light Church during the week. Or you may ask to have your prayers entered into our uh, Sunday intercessions and prayed by the entire congregation. You can, like again, say you can say you're anonymous or give us your name. Just give us any information you need right there at pray at DallasVLC.com. Also, this is a great place if you want to dedicate a service to a loved one. Today, our service is dedicated to my father, Dan Manning, uh, for his 67th birthday. Uh, I'm, he's the man that I admire the most. He's, he's an amazing man, um, and I wish him the best of birthdays. I wish I could be there with him, but I hope all his wishes come true. Uh, if you'd like to dedicate a service to a loved one who has either passed away or here, either way, great for birthdays, anniversaries, uh, uh, graduation gifts, you name it. It's an honor to have a, a service said in your name. Just simply, uh, again, go to pray at LSULC.com. Okay. Hey, did y'all know we had a podcast? A podcast. It's pretty cool, guys. Listen, if you haven't checked out the podcast, please do it. Um, it's a great way to, you know, even if you were here to, to hear the sermon again and uh, kind of relive and maybe just kind of go over again what we what you heard. And maybe, you know, I always hear, I, I give the sermon and I hear different things every week when I, I, I see different ways of looking at things. I, I hear, you know, just it's amazing. And the round table to hear, I mean, you're not going to get it all the first time in the round table. There's so much information there that I could listen to it five or six more times and still not get it all. It's amazing what, what, you miss just on the one time around, especially if you're here, you're distracted, whatever. And with this, with the, with the uh, a podcast, no, no visuals. It's all in your, it's all right here. Just use your imagination and hear what's going on. It's a great way to do it. Okay. Now to uh, hear this podcast, you simply go to any of your search engines and type in your path with Bishop Mark. Just search for your path with Bishop Mark, or you can find us here at these wonderful places here: uh, Google Podcasts, Anchor, TuneIn, Overcast, Breaker, Castbox, Radio Public, Podbean. Apple Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, and Spotify. If we get many more of those, I'm not going to be able to say them all. But <laughs> I think it's important to recognize these guys for, for picking up our, our podcast, and that's a wonderful thing. Now, on that note, it does cost us money to stay alive here at Dallas Universal Life Church, and we work on 
on your money. It's your, your donations that help us stay alive. Um, I do not take a paycheck as of yet. Hopefully someday that will happen, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is keeping this church going. So, if the, if the slide's going to come up, is it trying? Uh, Running a little slow again. Yeah, we're still having computer problems. We're, we're still having computer problems, and um, we haven't raised enough money okay, here we go. To, to, to fix that yet. But we're working on it. You become a supporter of Your Path with Bishop Mark. Now, we are three, three tiers that you can uh, do here. 99 cents a month, 4.99 a month, or 9.99 a month. I'll be very honest with you, none of those make a difference or a hill of beans to you. All that is is what can you afford on a monthly basis to help us out with, you know, realistically. And what do you think our service is worth? What do you think it's worth to keep Dallas Universal Life Church, your path with Bishop uh, Mark, alive every week? I, I hope it's worth 99 cents. I hope it's worth, you know, at least that. Um, you simply go to anchor.fm slash bishopmark slash support and choose one of those three tiers, and it helps us stay alive. I mean, that's, that's what gets us going. It, it costs money to run this thing. I mean paper and ink and, you know, power, <laughs> lights, cameras, computers. It takes a lot. And these volunteers here all do this for free. They don't, we don't, they don't get paid. I don't get paid. So, you know, we're, we're giving this out of our love and out of our, our calling to spread this word. And if you could help us out, keep this place open, we would appreciate it. Just go to anchor.fm slash bishopmark slash support. Okay. I hate doing that. I, I'm so bad at asking for money. I just am. Somebody's going to have to do that from, from now on. I just can't do it anymore. <laughs> All right, guys. Here it is. The big Holy Week schedule. Next week. Not this coming week. Not, not tomorrow. Not this week. Not today. But next Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week already. I told you I was going to be here, didn't I? I told you all. So let's talk about this. Um, it's, it's pretty detailed. And I want you to understand this is Holy Week. And it's – if you could make it to all the services, it would be appreciated. It's It's – the one time of the year that it is rather demanding of of Christians as far as service schedules go. But, my God, it's it's celebrating the life and death of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. If you can't, you know, give up a little bit of your time and come and, and celebrate that with your fellow congregants, you might want to make some changes in your life. So, Palm, Passion Sunday. Not to put a guilt trip on anybody. Really, honestly, I wasn't trying to. I'm just trying to be very honest with you, Okay. Palm Passion Sunday uh, is this next coming Sunday. It's next Sunday. Uh, our services will begin at 3 o'clock. You will not be allowed in the building before 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, there will be a processional outside the building. Everything will take place on the patio. There will be some chairs set up out there, probably a monitor. Um, we will bless the palms there on the patio. And then we will – normally what happens is they, the, the big churches, they, they everybody processes around their property, and they go into – the church kind of symbolizes going into Jerusalem. Well, we don't have that luxury here, so we'll, we'll, we, will, we will process from the patio to our, to our, state, to our, uh, our uh, church inside, and then we will go from there. So we'll, we'll make it happen. We did it last year. We'll do it again. It'll be great. Okay, so that's it. 3 o'clock, um, weather permitting, right outside. If there's a problem with the weather, we'll work with that, okay? I think it might, it might rain, but if it does, we've got, it's a covered patio. All right. Now, uh, this is a new one that I'm doing this year. Uh, being bishop uh, requires that... Um, I bless the oils for uh, for the anointings of that year. So for any uh, baptism, for any confirmation, for any funeral, for any weddings, so for any, anything we use, a uh, blessing of the sick. Anytime we use an oil to consecrate something, that has to be done. So this uh, Thursday at 11 a.m., we'll have a high mass, um, which will include the blessing of the oils. If you've never been to one of those, it's an interesting experience, and I encourage you to, to check it out. Okay. Uh, also, on that Thursday, it also happens to be Maundy Thursday. So not only will we have that one Mass in the morning at 11 a.m., we then have at uh, 6.30 p.m. the celebration of the Last Supper of Jesus Christ, Maundy Thursday. Okay? Maundy? Maundy Thursday. It's just the name of, of the Thursday. It's the day we celebrate the Last Supper. So oh, Jesus okay. celebrated the Last Supper. So that will be Thursday night at 6.30. We celebrate the Last Supper here uh, in a little more detail than we normally do. We celebrate the Last Supper every time we have communion, but in a little more detail this time. Okay? This is this is all this month. This is week is celebrating the week, you know, leading up to his death and resurrection. Okay, uh, my favorite day, my favorite church day of the year, Good Friday, is uh, this coming not this coming Friday but next Friday, uh, four nineteen nineteen. Uh, we will have at six thirty uh, the trial and crucifixion of Christ. Okay, um, that is the beginning of Holy at uh, the end of Holy Week there. Okay, so uh, there is actually. From Thursday until Sunday is actually considered one service. So it's, it's good if you can make them all because they're all kind of contiguous and, and you are sustained kind of a, a state of prayer through Holy Saturday and into the more beautiful morning of Easter Sunday. So speaking of that, on Easter Sunday at 5.30, not 6.30, 5.30 p.m., 
we will have a full service celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a beautiful service. Um, and then what everybody comes for, the potluck, uh, our annual potluck after the service, and then we'll have the round table, and then they'll have a potluck. And I'm telling you folks, the food is going to be off the chain. Isn't that the word? Off the chain, right? Mm, off the chain. Let me tell you something. Y'all going to love this. Uh, get with me um, in the next week or so. Y'all need to get with me and let me know what what, what uh, you're bringing to the service. We need everything. I mean, we've got a main course. Okay, I've got that. We need sides. We need drinks. We need desserts. Okay, those things we need. So whatever you can handle, let me know what you want to do. All right. Okay. Moving on. I think that's the last one. Yeah, that'd be great. Is it the last slide? See the little logo now? Yep, that's the last slide. See, I, I cut it down a little bit. What'd you like? What'd you not like? What do you want to keep? What do you want to get rid of? Today, we talked about the absolute cure for boredom. What y'all think about that? Talk to me. Help me out here. Calm down. <laughs> a little noisy upstairs during the service. Be a faith radical. Be a faith Calm radical. Down. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna be the broomstick out, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was about to do yeah, that. It's just that red handle. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we, I've had my share of kids up there that are a little bit rambunctious. It's just, oh, well. I don't understand putting a child that age in a one bedroom condo. But we did the one before that. Though. Oh, yeah. Well, one, yeah. We, we are yeah. the same thing to them, though, too. I'm sure they don't appreciate all the. I'm sure when I get upset and slam doors, they don't like it. And um, <laughs> drop it's not nearly. It's not, they don't hear all that. They hear some of it, but yeah. not, like, not like that. So, I mean, that's, that's hardwood floors up there with very little insulation between the two building two rooms, so that's just unfortunately, that's, that's a uh, price I have to pay for living on the first floor and having my patio and whatnot, so. Well, the patio's well worth it. Oh, amen. I mean, the dogs can go out there and do their thing and, and clean it, and it's great. All right, so again, yeah, here we go back, back to the, yeah, um, the absolute cure for boredom. Um, I haven't been bored in years. <laughs> Especially since starting this church. I don't have time to be bored. So. Are you bored? Anybody get bored in their lives right now? You do, don't you? Everybody does. Mm -hmm. Very. But I what I said in the sermon today was, you know, I there's no reason for you to be bored. If you're bored, it means you've got energy that God gave you that you're wasting. Well, it's not even that. It's, yeah. It's absolutely that. It's not even that. There's more to it. It's a way. Of course, there's a, more to it. You get more out. Of it. I mean, you benefit yourself for the long haul, even too, even if you don't have the Lord. I mean. Well, I assume you don't have anything. I know, but some people manage to do that, whatever. But I'm just saying, with or without the Lord, if, if you don't stay busy, you ain't going nowhere in life. Well, our, sure. our, our purpose on this earth is what, Gavin? So love and serve. Serve, serve and worship God. Yes. Right? Serve, serve and worship God. That's our duty, our job. To love one another. Well, that's part of it. That's that's yeah, one way you can serve and worship God is by loving one another. Another way you can serve and serve and worship God is by using your talents to yes. give to yeah. others. Another way you can serve and worship God is by, you know, showing up to church and tithing and helping your church spread its ministry. All those wonderful things that we talk about, charity work, you know, anything. Walking down the street and smiling at somebody and saying, hey, how you doing? Acknowledging that they exist. That's serving and worshiping God. All those little things we can do, all the good things in life, all those, those good things, those good, those feel good things, those those Joel Osteen things that he's always talking about, <laughs> that feel good preacher things. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're here for. And it's 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 not supposed to be burdensome, burdensome. Because you're right, it does do for you as much, if not more, than what it does for the other person. By like you giving away, trust me, folks, it comes back, and it's <laughs> so much more. You know, I talk about it all the time, you know. Uh, it's not even that it's being more, a, it just comes in a time of need. So it, be, it, it's got right. a double count on it. Being a man, a man or a woman for others is, you know, it's our saying here at the church, men and women for others. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's, you know, it's, it, we are a selfish world. We're, we're naturally, we're selfish people. You know, we protect ourselves first. Well, that's the hard part. But if we just continue to remember that others, so we're here for others, for others, for others. And when you say anything, by saying for others, what I mean by that is by for God. Because God is part of all those others. That's, that's what we're doing, all those good things. You've done to the least of them, you've done it to me, he says. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
and boredom should never ever be an issue. Uh, I mean, it, I, I push myself too hard. I'll be very honest with you. Everybody knows it. You know, I, I, I work until I pass out at night, and then I get up next morning. I start working again, and I do repeat it every day. So, yeah, it's yeah. I got school in the morning. I'm worried that. Mm. Worried that. So, five a.m. What else you got, guys? What did you think of that today? Would you did anything in particular? That, anything in particular that jumped out at you? Lots. Of, it was a lot of information today. It was, it was a long sermon. I need to learn how to smile more, like you said. That's you do. You got to. You got to make eye contact with people. You, you got to acknowledge other people. We are a communal society. You got to acknowledge other people exist. Mm-hmm. You walk down the street and you smile at a guy walking by. You just, hey, how you doing? What's up, man? Hey, yeah. <laughs> you acknowledge that person. Right. You may have just saved that man's life and not even know it. Wow. He may have been having the worst day of his life. Just lost his job. Was in a losing home. His kids were getting taken away by CPS, uh, and because. You know, he just everything just hit him at once, and he was going to jump over that bridge that you just crossed over as he was passing you by. It, you may have just saved his life, and you don't even know it, just by doing something so effortless. He's saying, hey, "What's up?" <laughs> Acknowledging he exists. That's cool. It is cool. You don't realize how many people you touch in a day without even without even speaking to them. You touch people. Your life. People observe you, and if you do things that are so, I mean, they're the. They, I say it's extraordinary, but it's just being Christian. It's just being a man, man for others. You know, give up your seat on the bus for somebody who needs it. You're yeah. an able-bodied person. You can stand up. You know, uh, hold the door open for somebody. All these wonderful things that we talk about, Southern gentlemen should be polite and do all this. That's part of it. It's all part of it. Yeah. You know. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So what else? Uh, I think it's just like. It's a lot. I mean, it's, it, there's a lot there, but it's hard to remember all the time. And, and, you know, we get in our ruts. We do. We get in our thoughts and our, and our emotions and whatever. But you've got to remember that that's when you had to do it the most. That's that's when you are needed. You're, you actually need it more than the other person, but it's needed the most when you get out there and spread the ministry. I mean, I've been saying it for three years now. Bring somebody to church. Thank you, Adam, for bringing somebody to church today. I appreciate that. Be with Steve. Yeah. Well, whoever. He's not here, so you did it. All right. Me to if, if, <laughs> if we don't, if our numbers don't start going back on the up, the numbers aren't going to be here anymore. they got to be past 6 3 because they're never going to be that for me and they shouldn't be that for you guys. <laughs> Just saying, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All it's right. out of love. <laughs> all right. It sounds depressing, but it's love. It's all, so it's all about is love. What about, what about Apostle Paul? Here's this guy, he's got everything in the world. He's one of the Pharisees, you know, the highly acclaim they are they are they're the the uh the, the superstars of 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 jesus's time uh, rich educated whatever he wants he has you know it's gonna be like what you see in weho now or in, in not weho in, in, in hollywood now uh you drive down beverly hills or whatever <laughs> see all these rich people and the, the stars and whatnot <laughs> that's what you would see you see Club yeah, hill cream it's like that it's very good it's not rich <laughs> pharisees were very highly acclaimed they were put on pedestals you know uh, and their job was to uh, uphold the laws of moses and you got this guy jesus coming along mm. what's this guy doing yeah. who the heck does he think he is and Paul does everything he can to try and thwart Jesus' existence and try and, to try and you know, disrupt his church. And then he meets Jesus. He meets him. And he does a 360. Or 180, rather. He does a 180. Turns around and says, oh, I was wrong. I gave up everything. And it's one of the reasons that, that a lot of priests take the vow of poverty, take the vow of chastity, and take those vows because they are giving up everything to worship God and to spread his message just like the apostles do that's the whole point there um, you, if, you're, if you're worried about money you're not worried about what's 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 God what God is wanting done because God isn't about money mm-hmm. uh, I, I hate to admit it doesn't cost money <laughs> it costs money there's a double sided double edged sword there you know it costs money for us to keep this church going and whatnot but it costs anything to pray mm-hmm. it costs anything to pray but it does cost money to keep the lights on and spread our message the way we want to spread it. And that's why I encourage you, please get out there when you're on the streets, when you're anywhere, when you're with your friends, whoever, talk about your church. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, th- this is... You know, if I don't talk about mine, it's because I'm ashamed of being down on What are you ashamed of? I'm very proud of my churches. 
I hope so. Everybody that believes in Jesus, I'm proud of them so much. I'm ashamed of myself because maybe I'm not adding up to what he wants me to be. So. Well, you know what? Then you stop being ashamed of yourself and start just just doing it. Yeah. Let that past go. Yeah. That's how you do it. You take that one step forward and keep going. Yeah. Don't look back. Mm-hmm. Yes, but not to look back. It's to forget our past. I'm so yeah. proud. No, no, not forget it. I didn't so say forget it. That I don't speak for him sometimes. Don't live in it. Don't live in it. Don't dwell in it. Don't get stuck in it. You you take that past and you learn from it. You remember it, but you don't you know, stick there in the muck. You know, kind of like being in quicksand. You're just sinking. you all constantly. See, I talked about that before. You know, when you have something bad happen to you, and you get sort of steals from you or whatever, and, and, and you get angry with that person. You want revenge, right? Right. And and you, you take that emotion and it's inside you, right? And you hold on to it and you keep pushing it down. And you just, oh, it makes me so mad. That jerk. He's not thinking of you. He, he's already spent your money. He's on the next one. He's gone. He doesn't know who you are. But you're pissed. And you hold it down. You keep pushing that, that resentment and that hate and that anger and that want for revenge down inside your body. And what happens? That stuff starts to sit there inside your body and it starts to fester. Mm-hmm. You know what festering is, right? It's festering. It becomes infected. Yellow, green pus and that smell. It's just, just oh, wretched. Golly. Right. And then that starts to course through your veins. And I'm, I, I'll say it before, I'll say it again. I'm a firm believer that I believe that, that many diseases are caused by us doing just that. Stressing. Stressing ourselves out, so by you know, holding on to those those things that we need to let go, because the universe will always be equal. It will equal itself out. We may not. In fact, you will probably won't see the equalization. You know, they're going to get theirs. Karma's a bitch, as I say, right? <laughs> it is, and that's all that, that means. It's, oh, there goes one beep. It, it, <laughs> it's it's it will equal out. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be next year. But that person will pay for what they've done for you. Don't change who you are based on them. Don't let them control your life and kill you by making you put that stuff down inside you. Don't let them, their actions dictate your future. Just because they, they did something wrong to you doesn't mean you're, you're going to do something else wrong. You stay on the straight and narrow. You have faith in God and you have faith that this universe will equal itself out. There will be equalization. God created the universe that way so that everything is equal and stays that way. Amazing the the, the the thought the, the the intelligence that went into the creation of this world and this universe it just dumbfounds me still. Wisdom that made the stars and the oh, I'm telling you, and, and what they are and all the things we're finding out about them, and, and then he turns around and makes us in his image. Like, what an honor! What an honor! His love, yeah, mm-hmm. unconditional love just forgives us, sends his son to be crucified, dies, suffers, suffers greatly. I mean, we say that in our in our creed, suffers greatly. Good Friday is coming up, and I'm, I'm, you can see I'm starting to gear up for it because it's a very emotional day for me. And I, I wish it was for everybody as it was for me, as it is for me. It didn't used to be. It used to be. I just go to Good Friday service and just you know, go through the motions and do the whole thing. And something clicked one, one, one day when we, you know, I realized how numb we were to saying, you know, Jesus Christ died for my sins. Well, he's crucified. He died. Mm. Maybe he suffered. You know, we say that and we don't think about what we're saying anymore. And that's why I think that's, that's why on Good Friday I was so um, adamant about making people understand that look, this was a horrific act on this man. And he a was great victory on this beaten. eternal life. He was beaten was. to a pulp, two inches of death, and brought back and mocked and spat upon and laughed at and and he didn't do anything wrong. He was there for us. He was taking our burden. It should have been us. It should have been all of us. Not him. That's what that love is. That's that, I mean, that's that amazing love that God has for us. It's crazy. That's crazy. That's what we strive for, though. That's what we're striving for, is that love. And we have to let go of our own will. We have to let that free will and listen what God is telling us to do. When you pray, pray. Tell God what you need. Tell Him your, your confession. Tell Him what you're going through in life. Praise Him. Thank Him for the things you have. And then shut up and listen. Mm-hmm. Shut up and listen. Because if you're not shutting up and listening, <laughs> prayer is not a monologue. I haven't said this in a long time. Prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is not a monologue. It's a conversation between you and God. And if you're just talking, He's got something to say back, folks. He didn't give you two ears for no reason. So 
listen. And if you can't hear him, keep trying. Take a little longer after the prayers, after you speak. Just shut up and just clear your mind, clear your thoughts. Just, just kind of get to that Zen place. That it's a, it is a meditation. Is what it is. It's what prayer should be. A meditation time for you to have that conversation with God. Turning your ears to listen. And yeah, yeah, your your quote unquote ears. Yeah, quote unquote ears. Not, you know, ears are, you know. A lot of people hear it different ways. They hear it. They hear it in their mind. They hear it in their heart. They feel it. They gut in their stomach. They have a, you know, a. Uh, That's a sixth sense. Yeah, that that you know, they think about that that voice. That I heard that 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 inner voice. Well, what do you think that inner voice is, folks? The what do you think that is? You don't want to do most of the time, but you barely hear it. That's usually mm-hmm. the right one. It's usually God talking to you. Yeah. And we all know. We all know what guilt is. We all know what guilt is. Guilt is a, a gift from God. Guilt is a gift from God because. Yeah, most people say, like, what are you talking about? Guilt to guilt is a gift from God. Well, guilt hurts. And the reason guilt hurts is because it's there to tell you, hey, look, hey, you may not be doing something exactly right right here. You might want to take a level look at what you're doing. And so that guilt comes in and makes you do that. It makes you go, hey, I just treated that person like a total piece of junk. And I, that hurts their feelings. I feel so, I'm sorry for that. I, I shouldn't have done that. And I, that's when you make amends. And you learn from that and move on. That guilt is a gift. Because if you didn't have guilt, hell, imagine. You can talk to anybody the way you want to, whatever, and you're, hell, I don't care. So, all right, guys. It was a good day today. I, I enjoyed that sermon. I enjoyed thank you giving that sermon. It was a good one. I appreciate y'all being here. Next week, I ask that you bear with us. We're going to make it through it, but it's it's a long week and I wish I could go on vacation afterwards but I have to say I won't be able to <laughs> it never ends and I'm grateful 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 that God has given me this opportunity to share with all of you and for you to share with me so let us go ahead and close this out in prayer today because I'm getting hungry from one afternoon and we will do this the big week starts next Sunday with Palm Sunday out on the patio okay all right so it's so much fun I love Palm Sunday we're here the palms are already here what'd you say I said you're so sincere no, I really do. I love Palm Sunday. The, the palms are already here, so I, I, we've got to get to, I've got to get out there and start to, um, weaving some of them into crosses and whatnot. So, all right, let's do this. Come on, sleepyhead. I can. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for the opportunity to come together and, without fear, speak of you and your Son and the Holy Spirit, and and learn what exactly it is you want us to do with our lives. As Holy Week approaches and Lent comes to an end, we ask that you help us to be especially vigilant in looking inward and making sure that we are doing what we are supposed to be doing and staying on that path that you created for each of us. We are responsible. Only us are responsible for our own paths, and nobody can tell us what path to take or what phone to answer, but we'll let that go. (laughs) I guarantee it's not God calling. Lord, this week we ask that you bless our parents here and those who have left. We ask that you bless our families and keep them safe. All the traveling that's gonna be happening in the next week, couple of weeks for, for the holidays, ask, we ask that all the travelers are kept safe as well. Lord, we look forward to your passion beginning next week. And we ask that you help us see clearly the truth of that week. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. All right, guys. Please help me get the room back together. We've got to move.